TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel kicked off its 75th Independence Day celebrations this evening with its annual torch lighting ceremony at Jerusalem's Mount Herzl. While well, Israel marked its annual Remembrance Day, separate acts of terror resulted in nine wounded Israeli civilians. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu proclaimed that if the enemies of Israel had a viable chance, they would have murdered every Israeli. Israel kicked off its 75th Independence Day celebrations this evening with its annual torch lighting ceremony at Jerusalem's Mount Herzl, which began roughly an hour ago. However, similar to every year, this evening's celebrations, which are set to continue throughout the night and the subsequent day tomorrow, were preceded by consecutive Memorial Day ceremonies that were held in military cemeteries across of Israel and which were attended by millions of Israelis since yesterday evening. And while Israelis commemorated their fallen, regrettably, terror repeatedly reared its ugly head, including yesterday afternoon, when an Arab resident of East Jerusalem rammed his vehicle into pedestrians adjacent to Jerusalem's Machne Yehuda market, less than half a mile from TV7 Israel Studios. As difficult as this incident is, as quickly as possible, conclude forensics, markings, bomb sweeps, we must return the situation to routine. We just concluded a situation assessment under command of the Jerusalem District Commander. From the details which we attained thus far, a vehicle that was driven by an East Jerusalem resident arrived at approximately 4.20 p.m. at the Kayak and Agrippa Streets Junction. The driver accelerated his vehicle into the intersection and struck a number of people who crossed the road. At this moment, we are talking about eight wounded in separate degrees of diagnosed injuries. I saw three, uh, two women, one, of, one, of the, uh, one on the wall, sitting down, um, her, her foot all twisted, one on the floor, and there was another one in a, all smashed in the front of the car. I saw also the, the driver, who was probably the terrorist, who were trying to run, run the people over. He was all shot. Uh, I saw I, 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 he had a black shirt. He was wearing a sunglasses, and uh, his shirt was all black. I live right here, uh, two minutes away, and I heard there was a terror attack right next to my house, so I came to see if I can help or something. Uh, what I understood is an uh, Arab from the East Jerusalem, uh, drove here and with his car and uh, ran over a few, like two women and one guy that's hardly injured. Following this attack, police identify the terrorist as a 39-year-old man, a father of five, from the East Jerusalem neighborhood of Bet Safafa. He was shot and killed by a pedestrian at the scene. Separately, the victims of the attack include an 80-year-old man, was hospitalized at Jerusalem's Sharet Tzedek Hospital in critical condition, a woman of about 30 who was hospitalized in moderate condition, and three Israelis who were taken to hospital for minor injuries, including for shock. Meanwhile in Gaza, the Islamist Hamas organization glorified the attack in Jerusalem, proclaiming that deliberate ramming of vehicles into Israeli civilians was a legitimate response to what they referred to as the Zionist religious war, which Hamas deceitfully insists that Israel wages against sacred sites of Islam and Christianity. In contrast, roughly one kilometer away from the location of the attack in Jerusalem, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu insisted in remarks to a Remembrance Day commemoration that the attack was yet another failed attempt to uproot the Jewish people from their ancestral homeland. A few minutes ago, not far from here, there was another attempt to murder Israeli citizens. This terror attack, in this place, at this moment, reminds us that the land of Israel and the state of Israel were acquired through many trials and tribulations. 
The first terror attack took place over 160 years ago, and many occurred thereafter, as they hoped and anticipated to overcome us, and uproot us from here. And if they could, the murderers back when and also today, they would have murdered us all. But they did not overcome us. We overcame them. We have established an exemplary state, with an exemplary military, and security arms. Exemplary. But at a heart-rending price. Subsequently, at the main state ceremony that was held at the Wailing Wall Plaza, Jerusalem's old city, which commenced following a minute-long memorial siren that sounded throughout the country, President Yitzhak Herzog seized the opportunity to repeatedly emphasize the need for Israeli society to remain united. The siren that pierced the silence right now, making its way from one end of the land to the next, rattles our souls and makes way for remembrance, which overwhelms us with silence. I ask myself, I ask us, what other country in the world has such a special sound? It is the sound of pain and of hope, of grief and of pride. It is the sound of the state of Israel. A sound that calls on us to pause for a moment, to lock in the sanctity, to remember and to connect together. This year, in the grips of these days of discord, this sound is more powerful, more searing, more pained and more painful than ever. This year, more than ever before, this sound calls on us, in the heart of the stillness that cries out, all of us, together. Their sacrifice has not been in vain. It shall never have been in vain. The Israeli head of state continued by stressing a basic requirement for Israel's future to remain one state with one military which remains beyond all internal disputes. The cost of internal strife is heavy, very heavy. At this sacred place, where so many of our soldiers swear oaths to defend the homeland, now is the time to pledge once more, we have one army and one state. The IDF and the men and women who serve it must remain beyond all disputes. All of us, from all shades of this nation, must find that which connects and unites us. And not only in our cemeteries. We must predicate our covenant of life, commit to the unity of Israel, to the eternity of Israel, and to the Jewish and democratic state of Israel. President Herzog further addressed a terror attack in Jerusalem, alongside other acts of terror which repeatedly struck Israel over the course of the past year, during which another 59 soldiers were added to the number of the fallen, 86 veterans passed away as a result of past wounds and disabilities, and 39 civilians were added to the list of victims of nationalistically motivated acts of murderous terror. This past year too, and even today, terror has reared its head. The heavy price in blood that we have paid for our existence has left gaps among our ranks. But we shall not break. Our enemies completely misinterpret the Israeli culture of argumentation and the Israeli spirit. They should make no mistake, we are all one people, one shared society, one state, which will continue to defend itself, will continue to extend a hand in peace, will continue to overcome, time after time those who rise up to destroy us, and it will continue to walk with heads held high, despite the pain, and because of the pain. Meanwhile, in the southern part of the West Bank district of Samaria, at approximately 9.43 a.m. this morning, the IDF published an initial report regarding a shooting incident adjacent to the town of Silwad. It was subsequently confirmed that a vehicle with Palestinian license plates was sighted crossing the British police junction, at which time one of the vehicle's passengers drew a weapon and opened fire toward an Israeli civilian pedestrian before fleeing the scene. 
The civilian was briefly treated at the scene by medical teams and subsequently evacuated to hospital in moderate condition. In tandem, the IDF, in cooperation with the ISA or Shin Bet, launched a manhunt after the suspected terrorist. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. If you're blessed by our productions and would like to help support TV7 Israel's ongoing operations, which are exclusively donation based, please consider making a financial contribution. You can do so by visiting our website at www.tv7israelnews.com. Separately, I would like to encourage you to unceasingly pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, as well as for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Chagat Samaut Sameach, and God willing, we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time.